So we were reading from Adi Lila chapter 4. The first point we read was that even a foolish child can understand Achenda Nandana through the mercy of our beloved Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is non different from Ratha in mood and in complexion. The second point we were reading were the plans of Krishna to appear, to taste the love of Radha. And the second was to distribute this kind of love to the Jivas. So we understand the real inner motives, or at least we can try to understand. So the third point um, arises the question, how can we understand, we foolish children? And this we will hear now. And we will read on from text uh, 41. So Adi Lila, chapter 4, text 41. If somebody wants to share something, maybe about the last uh, sentences or if you have the feeling that you may add something or have a question or whatever, please don't mind to interrupt me because otherwise I will just go on step by step. So please take the chance. And let us share on these themes. So text 41. In this way, assuming the sentiment of a devotee, he preached devotional service while practicing it himself. So in this verse, we hear that Krishna made the plans to come to feel Radha's love for him and to distribute it. And he wants to distribute it to every foolish child. So, to every jiva. In this sentiment, he comes as a devotee and he is preaching devotional service while he is practicing it himself. This is the way we actually share. We are doing it ourselves and others can see the practice and then it can be shared nicely. It's not the way to just go over the intellect or reach it. Prabhupada is writing in the purport, when Rupa Goswami met Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at Prayag, Allahabad, he offered his respectful obeisances by submitting that Lord Chaitanya was more magnanimous than any other avatar of Krishna because he was distributing love of Krishna. So who is love of Krishna? We may understand. He was distributing love of Krishna. His mission was to enhance love of Godhead.
So Prabhupada is writing between the lines and someone who is in the mood, he may understand. In the human form of life, the highest achievement is to attain the platform of love of Godhead. Again, in the human form of life, the highest achievement is to attain the platform of love of Godhead. Lord Chaitanya did not invent a system of religion. Lord Chaitanya did not invent a system of religion, as people sometimes assume. Religious systems are meant to show the existence of God, who is the generally approached as the cosmic order supplier. Like Guru Dev is telling us, it's like Emerson. <laughs> the cosmic order supplier. So this was not the point. He didn't want to make another religion. But Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's transcendental mission is to distribute love of Godhead to everyone. Anyone who accepts God as the Supreme can take to the process of chanting Hare Krishna and become a lover of God. So like Gurudev say, if you signed, you signed Krishna is God, now you can start. Then you can become a lover of God. So you may enter in the different relationships. For us it's very clear which kind of relationship we want. The four Lord Chaitanya is the most magnanimous. Hmm? Uh, therefore, sorry. Therefore, Lord Chaitanya is the most magnanimous. This magnificent broadcasting of devotional service is possible only for Krishna himself. Therefore, Lord Chaitanya is Krishna. This is what Prabhupada is writing here. In the Bhagavad, Krishna, uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna has taught the philosophy of surrender to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. One who has surrendered to the Supreme can make further progress by learning to love him. We see in every between lines, the white lines, we can read actually the real mood of Prabhupada. Here he's very clear stating in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna has taught the philosophy of surrender to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So most of the people think, yeah, that's it. But he is writing, one who has surrendered to the Supreme can make further progress by learning to love him. Who can learn us how to love Krishna, we can understand. There is only our Radharani who can give this to others because she is Aradhika. She is giving the most pleasure to Krishna. He, she is loving him the most. So from whom 
we could learn. Prabhupada is writing, therefore, the Krishna consciousness movement propagated by Lord Chaitanya is especially meant for those who are cognizant of the presence of the Supreme Godhead, the ultimate controller of everything. So especially made for them who actually know already. His mission is to teach people how to devotee themselves into engagements of transcendental loving service. He is Krishna teaching his own service from the position of a devotee. The Lord's acceptance of the role of a devotee is the eternal form of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, is another of the Lord's wonderful features. A conditioned soul cannot reach the absolute personality of Godhead by his imperfect endeavor, and therefore it is wonderful that Lord Sri Chaitanya Oh, that Lord Sri Krishna, in the form of Lord Garanga, has made it easy for everyone to approach him. Swarup Damoda Goswami has described Lord Chaitanya as Krishna himself with the attitude of Radharani. Or a combination of Radha and Krishna. His intention is to taste Krishna's sweetness in transcendental love. His intention is to taste Krishna's sweetness in transcendental love. So what does it mean? How he can taste his own sweetness in transcendental love? Only possible when he is taking the side of Radha. Lord Chaitanya does not care to think of himself as Krishna because he wants the position of Radharani. So it's very clear stated from Srila Prabhupada here, Lord Chaitanya does not care to think of himself as Krishna, because he wants the position of Radharani. We should remember this. A class of so-called devotees called the Madhya Nagari or Gora Nagari pretended that they have a sentiment of gopis towards Lord Chaitanya. But they do not realize that he places himself not as the enjoyer, but as the enjoyer. The devotee of Krishna. So, and if Krishna is playing a devotee of himself, which devotee he may play? Some low class devotee, some middle class devotee, or the highest class devotee? We may ask. And who is the highest class of devotee of him? Jai Sri Rati. Presentations such as those of the Gora Nagari are only disturbances.
So Prabhupada makes it very clear that if someone understands the mood, it's impossible to, <laughs> to be a gopi of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Lord Chaitanya has accepted the role of Radharani and he would support that position as Swarup Damura did in the Gambira, the house of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at Puri. He always reminded Lord Chaitanya of Radha's feelings of separation as they are described in the Srimad Bhagavatam. And Lord Chaitanya appreciated his assistance. So anyone has some commentary or some question on that, what we read in this text 41 and 42. So then we will continue text 43. Each kind of devotee feels that his sentiment is the most excellent. And thus, in that mood, he tastes great happiness with Lord Krishna. But if we compare the sentiments in an impartial mood, we find that the conjugal sentiment is superior to all in sweetness. No one is higher or lower than anyone else in transcendental relationship with the Lord. For in the absolute realm everything is equal. But although these relationships are absolute, there are also transcendental differences between them. Thus, the transcendental relationship of conjugal love is considered the highest perfection. Increasing love is experienced in various tastes, one above another. But that love which has the highest taste is the gradual succession of desire manifests itself in the form of conjugal love. I want to give you a picture on that actually. Because here it's stated nicely that the relationships are built on another or inside another. And conjugal love actually has all kind of different relationship in it. It's the, the fullest form actually. We understand? Maybe in this way. So we see in the middle, the smallest is the neutral position. Then it's going up, serving friendship, elderly, and the highest conjugal love, which is also divided in two aspects. I think it's fine to see this in that form because it always remembers me that the other kind of relationships are inside of Manjari Bhav. 
because we are serving the one who is in the highest behalf. So, in this way, we will get all other relationships and all bhavas of these relationships also included. So, we will miss nothing. Therefore, I call it Madhura Ras. It was two. Uh, it has two further divisions, namely wedded and unwedded love. So even in the material world, we can understand that these two positions have a different taste. Wedded or unwedded love. So, if you are in the highest position, it's natural that you taste all different kinds of tastes of transcendental love. Because this has nothing to do with lust, like it would be in the material realm. It's the purest love. Radharani wants to serve his, her beloved in this mood, because for him it's even more higher taste than to be married. So she is giving him bhavas and tastes that even he would not expect. And who can say that he is giving the highest person, God himself, something he is astonished of? Who can do that? Only our Swamini. And she is doing this here, completely selfless, for his pleasure. And others also try. This mood is unbounded in the damsels of Braj. But among them, it finds its perfection in Sri Radha. Her pure, mature love surpasses that of all others. Her love is the cause of Lord Krishna's tasting the sweetness of the conjugal relationship. Therefore, Lord Goranga, who is Hari himself, accepted the sentiments of Radha and thus fulfilled his own desires. So in the purport of this verse number 50, Prabhupada is writing, some devotees think that Krishna is eternally the enjoyer in Goloka Vrindavan, but only sometimes comes to the platform of Braj to enjoy Parakya Ras. The six Goswamis of Vrindavan, however, have explained that Krishna's pastimes in Braj are eternal, like his other activities 
इन कुलोका पंडावन ब्राज इज अ कॉन्फिडेंशियल पार्ट ऑफ कुलोका पंडावन Krishna exhibited his brach pastimes on the surface of this world and similar pastimes are eternally exhibited in brach in goloka pandavan where parakya ras is ever existent so we can see that radharani is in every moment everywhere fulfilling the wishes of krishna and his more specific forms like mohan achandanandana shyam and she is the best without radharani you cannot call krishna the enjoyer the highest enjoyer Text fifty one, Lord Chaitanya is the shelter of the demigods, the goal of the Upanishads, the be all and end all of the great sages, the beautiful shelter of his devotees, and the essence of love for the lotus-eyed gopis. will he again be the object of my vision lord krishna desires to taste the limitless nectarian mellows of the love of one of his multitude of loving damsels Sri Radha, and so he has assumed the form of Lord Chaitanya. He has tasted that love while hiding his own dark complexion with her effulgent yellow color. May that Lord Chaitanya confer upon. as his grace So Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami is writing in text 54 having first given hints about the verse describing the principal reason why the lord appeared now i shall manifest its full meaning the loving affairs of shri rata and krishna are transcendental manifestations of the lord's internal pleasure giving potency although rata and krishna are one in their identity they separated themselves eternally 
Now these two transcendental identities have again united in the form of Sri Krishna Chaitanya. I bow down to him who has manifested himself with the sentiment and complexion of Srimati Radharani, although he is Krishna himself. Radha and Krishna are one and the same, but they have assumed two bodies. Thus, they enjoy each other, tasting the mellows of love. So actually, even here, in the beginning, we can learn immediately it's all about relationship and it's all about exchanging love in relationship this is very clear because even Rata and Krishna, they are our greatest example. How boring to be alone. You may, de you may be the richest and the best of all, possessing all kinds of opulences. Everybody is praying to you. How boring. How boring to be God. If we feel a little bit, it's boring if you don't have someone who is on your eye level and you can exchange pure love. And this is actually a very clear loving advice for us. It's all about relationship. You can never be happy alone. You can never be happy in the mountains as a Muni or something like that, sitting there, not having any exchange. You have to be in a relationship. I mean, even in the material world, we have some experience that there are some very rich people, a lot of other people around them who just want their money, who are praising them, and they are bored and they are alone, completely alone. We can see so many well-known people just one moment on the stage and in the other moment completely alone behind the stage. Rich, well known, but alone. Frustrated. So the only way to be happy is to go in relationship. We have to be active in relationship. But actually, what is holding us? I was reflecting on that once. What is holding us back to go in a deep relationship with Radharani, which is love herself, which is so soft, which will never ever hurt us,
What is holding us back to give our full heart? Our material experience. Because sometimes we gave our hearts and then something happened which we didn't expect and it wasn't very positive maybe. And then we closed. So unconsciously, we all though have this fear that if we open our heart, we may be again hurt. But actually, this is what we need in Bhajana Kriya. We can make the opposite experience. We invest some love, very practical, and then the result will be, oh, nothing negative happened. Oh, everything was so nice. It was even more positive than I would ever expect. Oh my God, some feelings arise. They are not bad. They are good. Actually, I talk for myself. I had very bad experience in the material world and I was very much hurt. And it was very hard for me to open again to Gurudev and to Radharani again this heart which was cut it so often. It was not so easy. But if we are in practical service, if we are in this relationship and we invest just a little, like a good businessman is just investing a little and let's see what is coming out and then invest more. We can do like this in the beginning and then let's see what comes out. Invest a little bit, trust a little bit more, then again and again and then we will come to the position that we will forget this material body because more and more we will absorb in the spiritual consciousness and in the spiritual self because we are not material. We know that theoretically. But I can say it's not so easy to distinct because when the unconscious realm is coming up with this old story, you were hurt, then sometimes it's not so easy. So it's good to remember the name of your form, maybe some aspect of your real identity, and then slowly your consciousness of being hurt is shifted shifted to the consciousness of being overwhelmed by love more and more and more. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is actually giving us this way because he is not giving us another way of religion as we heard. Because then we could do again this experience that we invest something and in religion we would be heard again. Because we all know what religion is. But no, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not giving this path. He is giving the path of pure love of Radharani. So Radharani, if you just invest a little feeling, she will over flood you with her love. And this is actually the path everyone can go. Hurt, more hurt or catastrophical hurt. <laughs> it's the way everybody actually can go. And this is the highest mercy. It's like the mother is coming down and 
making like this, oh my child, you were hurt so often, but now I will show you the most easy way back in love. And please, I will take you by the hand, just come with me. And you see, here is your navigator, just follow. It's like this. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came with all his associates to just give the loving way, the most confidential, the most natural way to come back. In pure love, the purest. So in this way, it's the mercy, it's the Brahma Tattva, the mercy Tattva, the Panja Tattva, who is showing us the way back home in the most loving way ever. So Radha and Krishna are one and the same, but they assume two bodies. Thus, they enjoy each other, tasting the mellows of love. And they are inviting us, taste with us, come. Come and taste with us, the mellows of love. It's actually very simple, isn't it? It's not complicated. It's not about Kyan. It's not about religion. It's just about how to love. So maybe someone wants to add or share something with us, give a question. So now, text 57, now to enjoy rasa, they have appeared in one body as Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So as we heard, it's like a sandwich, it's a one body, Krishna is inside and is watching and enjoying the scene from inside and the mood of Radha is acting and the complexion of Radha is emanating the Mahabhav, distributing the Mahabhav in all directions like the sun which is coming up in the morning and is giving the sunlight to every corner, clean or not, no distinction, every corner. So Radharani is giving her effulgence to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the mood. And Krishna is enjoying from inside, like the trees between the bread. And it's an invitation for us also. Come, enjoy that rasa.
Text 58. Therefore I shall first delineate. I don't know this word actually. Delineate. Delineate. Therefore I shall first delineate the position of Radha and Krishna from that. The glory of Lord Chaitanya will be known. Srimati Radhika is the transformation of Krishna's love. She is his eternal energy called Ladini. This Ladini, this energy, gives Krishna pleasure and nourishes his devotees. So it's a little bit technical description here. I'm sorry. I know I actually also don't like it very much when it's getting so technical. It's the energy which is giving pleasure. But actually, as we can see, there is Shakti and Shakti Man. So we also have sometimes this understanding. But we know that actually here meant is Radharani who is giving pleasure to Krishna and nourishes his devotees. And this is actually the point Gurudev is again and again making. Nourishes his devotees. So who is nourishing us? Who is giving us the milk? Who is inviting us? Come, come to me and take a place on my lap and then drink the milk. This is Radharani. She is the mother of our real existence. She is giving the form. She knows exactly who we are. Aha, somebody was writing here. The Thank you very much. The line means something like describe, no? specify, define, identity. Yes, thank you very much. So that Ladini energy gives Krishna pleasure and nourishes his devotees. So Radharani is the source of all pleasure for Krishna. And she is nourishing us. We drink the milk of her love. As little babies, we drink the milk and we are nourished. For me, this is more a description I can take, actually. Gurudev is making it so easy for us because I understand that Krishna's Kaviraj Goswami he cannot describe it in such a, um, a way of feelings because he has to describe it very neutral because all devotees of all bhavas are reading this so but in our little meeting here we may go a little bit more in this emotional part. And please share your emotions to that point. 
I like to hear what you feel. I like to hear what you have experienced already in that point. It's much more taste in sharing than in tasting alone. Right? You can eat together. Please give me some maha. Radhe <laughs> Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Um, I just felt a very, very basic and small thing, but uh, maybe a little bit share. Share? Not maybe not share, but yeah, I will say that. Um, I know the word flood in Shakti, and um, I understand enjoy it here, and um, uh, the person who enjoy and uh, get the enjoy. And then, but I, in my mind, I understand these are a little bit separate things. But now I understand the power or energy helps someone. So a lot is always helping um, Krishna. And then without helping or object, Krishna cannot enjoy anything or not. So now I just understand these two things. A flooding shakti and an enjoyer is um, uh, related. That's yes, it. that's wonderful. Thank you very much. I mean, it. We we don't care if you think you have a big or a small uh, understanding of something. We just want to share because we all see it from different aspects. I'm. Um, artist. So sometimes it's a very, very um, uh, great point from which position or, uh, you see something. You know, it's it's a question of your perspective. And if somebody has a little bit other perspective, then the whole picture is changing. So it's nice to see all different kind of perspectives to get an overview more and more. You cannot really overview the love of Radharani. You cannot overview the exchange of Radharani and Krishna. But this is actually, we try to, to churn the whole thing more and more. And this is actually our real enjoyment. Let's say like this, it's not that we want to enjoy, but it is the enjoyment of the soul, and the soul actually gets more rati. I want, I want to be in the seva. Because of this, because of that, because of this, because of that. And the more different views you have, the more you get a whole picture of the scene, actually. So please, share. There will be no notes on it, right? <laughs> well, it's called note. Uh, you know, it's not one to six or something like this. Huh? This was very good. This was good. This was no. Everything is very, very good. So actually, it's like you said, a material um, explanation would be you have a very nice car in front of your door, but you don't have any charge of the battery or benzene, no fuel. What you can do with it? Nothing. You cannot enjoy it, right? No Shakti. So always these two things are needed. And this is actually the system of love, because love always needs the exchange. So 
So without relation, no exchange, no love can be exchanged. And love is the fuel of the soul. And the highest love is the fuel of the highest soul. So only Mahabhav is able to move Krishna. Really to move him and to underwerfen, uh, to, yeah, to control him. Even we men in the material world are controlled by love of our wife or our children, isn't it? This is what really controls us, the love. So Krishna's navigation system is Radha. He cannot move without her. He will not move without Mahabha. So we are reading in text 62 now. Somebody ask. Chapter 4 of Chaitanya Charit Amrita. We will read now text number 62 in this chapter 4. Ladini is his aspect of bliss. Sandini of eternal existence. And Samvit of cognitions, which is also accepted as knowledge. So Ladini is his aspect of bliss, Sandini of eternal existence and some bit of cognitions which is also accepted as knowledge. So Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami is giving a very nice explanation so that we may understand the different aspects of Krishna's energies. For us, the most important is very clear. So we will go on in text number 63. O oh Lord, you are the support of everything. The three attributes, Ladini, Sandini and Samvit, exists in you as one spiritual energy. This is very interesting. Very interesting point. You are the support of everything. The three attributes, Ladini, Sandini and Sambit, exist in you as one spiritual energy. Why it's so interesting? Gurudev is telling us sometimes that his Gurudev, 
Sri Sri Radha Govinda Das Babaji said once to him, Do you understand? The inner energy is going to be the outer energy to serve in love. So Antaranga Shakti, the inner energy, is going to be Vahiranga Shakti, to serve in love. So it's an interesting point because the energies are there, but used by the pure love, by Radharani, all Shaktis are actually under her control, under the highest control of love. That's why he can only be controlled by love. It's also a little bit technical understanding, but this actually proves that Krishna is under full control of Radha. Not just a little bit, full. What he is without Radha. It's a nice point to meditate on actually, because this shows how great the love from Radharani is. Her energies are actually, through Anangamandri, also taking care of us Jivas. And this we can find in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the love, the mood of love, The law want to show us the way back home. We are not at home here. We are not happy here. It's freezing cold. It's Kali Yuga. It's getting dark. It's the last Yuga. Maybe such a Yuga is a little bit more, uh, I would say, pleasing. Maybe you could stick easier in this material world. But now it's Kali Yuga, it's getting cold, it's getting dark. People are completely emotionless. They are just running and getting material things together. No love anymore. It's a very dark time. So, Mother is coming, sending, because she will always stay in the spiritual sky together with her beloved. She will always stay in Vrindavan, sending her sister, Anangamandri. Nitai, he and Janavama, they are Ananga Mandri together. So Nitai is coming and he is actually taking care of all the outer things, isn't it? Nitai is this computer, Nitai is this microphone, Nitai is this glass, Nitai is this table, Nitai is everything. But not only that, not only the outer energy, also the love is coming. Gadatha is coming. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadatha is coming. So it's Prema Shakti and Bhakti Shakti. Srivas is also there showing us the way how to actually act in bhakti. So the whole mercy package is there. We cannot even assume what mercy we are swimming in now. 
Motherly affection inside. This is the mercy for us, Jivas, still there in Kali Yuga. We didn't make our way back in all the other Yugas. It's the greatest mercy. So we see that all this power all this potency, Radharani is representing, it's representing her love, her love for Krishna in all kinds of countless services to him, but also all kinds of countless services to us, Jeevas. You can have the biggest brain and you will not understand fully. It's not possible. So better we try to feel a little bit of this mercy. Then the heart gets more soft. Because this is love you cannot describe. It's undescribable. Who heard about this before? No one. Who could even imagine? No one. So the essential portion of the Sandini potency is Shuddha Sattva. Lord Krishna's existence rests upon it. Krishna's mother, father, abode, house, bedding, seats, and so on, are all transformations of Shuddha Sattva. Here it's described nicely. The condition of pure goodness, Shuddha Sattva, in which the Supreme Personality of Godhead appears uncovered is called Vasudev. In that pure state, the Supreme Godhead, who is beyond the material senses and who is known as Vasudev, is perceived by my mind. The essence of the Samvit potency is knowledge that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is Lord Krishna. So actually we are talking about Satchit Ananda, which also we are, a soul, right? So the eternal knowledge is actually inside. You know who is your father. You know that Krishna is the father soul or the super soul, right? Inside of the soul you know. So it's eternal knowledge that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is Lord Krishna. It's always with us. All other kind of knowledge are such as the knowledge of Brahman are its components. So it's included because Krishna is also Brahman. So it's very logical that it's included. Like I said, it's a little bit technical here, but we see all information are there and they are very logical. And 
more logical, even if we see it out of the eyes of love. Because actually all these arrangements are made first to please Krishna, but second point also to bring us back, to save us as soul from suffering, bring us back home. So we can even technically understand the love of Radha for us. Isn't that amazing? And this is the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So you may say, yes, it's proof that God exists. And here we may say, yes, it's proof that Radharani loves us so much that you cannot describe it. It's proved here. Sri Rata Thakurani is the embodiment of Mahapava. She is the rep repository of all good qualities and the crest jewel among all the lovely concerts of Lord Krishna. As embodiment of Mahabhav, how you could not take care of all your children. Impossible, even for worldly mother, impossible to not take care of the children. As embodiment of Mahabhav, highest, highest feelings possible. All good qualities are in her, and she is the grass jewel, the crown jewel of all lovely concerts of Lord Krishna. In fact, all others are expansions. Of these two gopis, Radharani and Chandravali, Srimati Radharani is superior in all respects. She is the embodiment of Mahabhav and she surpasses all in good qualities. Jai Shri Radha. This is our Swamini. And why Radharani is so superior? In the case of this girl, we didn't want to even mention the name who is living somewhere else and trying to get Krishna here and there. Because this girl actually is still in God consciousness. <laughs> she doesn't want to uh, step on his foot when, he, when she's dancing with him. For example. That's why the dance then doesn't look so nice. <laughs> In Radharani there's not one whiff of Aishwarya Bhav. And maybe this can give us some inspiration. If we have accepted the existence of Radharani and Krishna like they are, 
if we assign that Krishna is God, then another task is to come out of this God consciousness, come out again of Aishwarya, out of fear. And again, Radharani is our master here in that aspect. Love doesn't know any borders, right? In real love, there's no Aishwarya. Otherwise, it's not real love. So Radharani is the ground jewel in all aspects. Her mind, senses, and body are steeped in love for Krishna. She is Krishna's own energy and she helps him in his pastimes. Without Mahabhav, Just imagine Radhakund and Shyamakund. If there is no Radhakund, no water in the Shyamakund. No Shyamakund. In the same way, without Radha, what is the use of Rasavaisaha. This Chaitanya Charit Amrita is making it very clear who is Radharani, in which undescribable good position the souls are here in this Kali Yuga if they just accept the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then they will accept the mercy of Radharani, actually. We are in a very, very good position. We may dance from morning till in the evening and sing Sri Chaitanya's names and the names of Radharani. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda So this was the text I chose for today. Sorry, it's a little bit technical also, but I tried to give it another few. Maybe you want to share something on that. So then, another aspect. The beloved concerts of Lord Krishna are of three kinds. The goddesses of fortune, the queens, and the milkmaids of Braj, who are the foremost of all. We may feel a little bit about this. Three kinds. The goddess of fortune, so, wow, the goddess of fortune, Pooh, high position, huh? 
The Queens. Ooh, high position. But who are the foremost of all? The Milkmaids. The goddesses of fortune are included in, in Radharani because she's Shakti. Of course, she's also the Shakti of good luck, of richness and all this. But this is just by the side. Actually, she is the real queen of love. She is Vrindavanishwari. Because of her love, because of her Mahabhav. Who cares about good luck, money, all these things. Without love, we can see even here in this material world, we can see it very clear. No happiness. No fun. No taste. No juice. Try. I think we all have this experience already. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here and share such topics. So let us concentrate on this lotus feet of Radha, the lotus feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the Brahma Tattva, Pancha Tattva. I always say Brahma Tattva, sorry. Because this is the source, our life source actually. Thank you very much that you shared your time here. And again, if somebody has question or some want to share something on that, please just do it. Thank you very much. Radha, can you wait one moment? Yeah. Maybe Guru, if we come. Radha, Radha. <laughs> Radha, Radha. Guru is here all the time. We're all listening. Many of nine. Beautiful. Somebody is want to share and ask some questions. questions. Maybe some questions. Are there. Okay, yeah. thank you. We will go with other devices also. Hmm. Maybe you. If Radha Radhavaya, thank you so much for this beautiful class. Mute. Rade, Rade. <laughs> Gopika. Can, maybe you can remind us back to the, to the two lines from the text that we were reading and commenting on just to refresh before. Um, in the beginning, I was actually remembering that we were reading in the first uh, meeting here that even a foolish child can understand Vachendanandana by the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Even a foolish child. May understand Achandanandana by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
This is a very, very nice sentence, right? And the second meeting we were actually reading about the plans of Krishna before he appeared. What was his plans? Why he came actually? What was the reason, the real inside reason? The first reason was, of course, it is connected with Radha, how it could be in another way. He wanted to feel the love which he has for him. So sometimes people say, he wants to understand. No, you cannot understand love. You have to feel it. He is Krishna, he could understand technical, all, all kind of things, no problem, but he wants to feel the love of Radha for him. This is another point, this is opening up another dimension. <laughs> And, and it, it's so fascinating, no, Kauravani um, Bhaiya, that the supreme personality of Godhead cannot understand the supreme love of Swamini. So he had to come as Gora, like, you know, he, he had to steal her, have her complexion in order to smear it on him, to cover himself, as Gurudev always says, to become the sandwich to understand, you know, and make us understandable also, make it accessible to us humans. This is the big mercy of, 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 of Lord Chaitanya to be. And the second point, actually, of the plans of him before he appeared was also if he tastes this love, he cannot be a miser. He cannot be selfish. He wants to distribute it to everyone. No distinction if they are in some way or other, maybe a little bit, um, I would say, uh, qualified. Qualified or not qualified, when the sun is rising, it's sending his, uh, his light in all corners, even the dirtiest corners, and cleaning it. In Prema Bhakti Chandrika, uh, Anandas Bhavaji comments, on Narodandas Thakur's writings, and there is one part which is also, I think, the Chaitanya Charitamrita. He's saying, Mahaprabhu is saying, you know, he's like the gardener and he's distributing the fruits of Prema and he's saying to everyone, come, help me, you cannot do it alone. You know, you also have to distribute. And this is what happens. The Goswamis are giving and then their followers are giving, and the parampara is going on, and Gurudev is giving. No, he cannot stop, actually. This is what Guruvani, you just said, no? It's, he, can, he can't be a miser, like, you know, he has to be generous. From Madhurya, he becomes Audarya and shares. And then he also um, he says, Ananda Das Babaji, that in this age of Kali, everyone, every living entity can become Radha Dasi. There's no qualification. This is the mercy of this Yuga. Everyone, like old, sick, small, big, every, like me, you, we, all. This is mind blowing, no? This is the mercy of Mahaprabhu. Everyone can become Radha Das. Even my mother, my father, you know, have the potential to become a Dasya Vadarani in this age. So, this is really the most precious treasure gift we received from Mahaprabhu coming downwards to our Gurudev.
Yes, thank you very much for sharing this because it's impossible to describe even for millions of mouth what mercy this is. So what to speak of one little mouth, how it could be described all this mercy, it's impossible. We can just touch a drop of it. And it's so merciful that, like you said, that this uh, line is still there from the six Kusmamis. And we have to understand how fortunate we are, especially in this parampara. Yeah. It's coming directly from Ananga Manjari. It's unbelievable. Such a mercy. I mean, in the mercy, even this mercy is, is it's like a jewel in a jewel in a jewel in, in, in gold in, in, I don't know, I cannot describe it. It's, it's undescribable. And Gorwani, if I just can add to this, you know, um, it's so undescribable, but it's daily experienced and displayed by Gurudev. Because when you are with Gurudev, when you visit, you see out of the blue somebody appears to him, you know. It might be a traveler, it might be a friend, we sent to Vrindavan, has no idea about Bhakti, has no idea about Mahaprabhu, but Gurudev showers the prema. <laughs> and that soul feels something and he feels suddenly taste for the holy name. He feels taste for bhakti. Where is this coming from? You know, this person has never been in contact with anything to this, you know, compared maybe to some of us who have been practicing 20 years and studying and, you know, on the path, going on, churning, churning. But this is what again brings back to that, that in this age, everyone can become a basa. The Mahaprabhu's gift the parampara, Gurudev, you know, the line which you said, it's it's flowing, you know, and anyone, anyone who comes in contact with the Rasik Vaishnava of a, of a follower of Mahaprabhu can get that infusion, that virus. <laughs> so <laughs> this is this is what you said, no, you can't describe it, but when you see it, you, you feel, my God, this is a miracle. You know? This is Kripa, this is Karuna, yeah. Unlimited. And it's not not only in Vrindavan like that. Yeah. I mean, even we fallen souls here in, in, in the Western countries, because we are connected to Gurudev and this parampara, people are coming to us and the same thing happened like you just described. They are asking questions and you just answer. And then after one hour, two hours, they are so inspired. They want to change their life. They want to come again and again. So it's it's not a breaching mission. It's it's a, a it's like a, a tracking mission. It's attracting. Like, come, come. We don't want to breach. It's a virus. Just, just uh, share it. Because it's so much. You cannot digest it. You need to share it. Right, right, Gurudev. <laughs> we have to not be miser. Right, right. Not to be miser. <laughs> miser means not talking. <laughs> <laughs> not sharing. You are miser. You have to come out from this, this uh, blockage. Is a blocking. You are not coming in the picture, it's blocking you. These are not good things. Impersonal behavior. Please, personal behavior. This is the parampara of personal relation mm -hmm. and personal intimate friendship. Mm -hmm. And share, right or wrong, share. And Develop feelings of the speaker and develop the feeling of yourself. 
If you not share, then is your blocking, your block. You want to not, you want to be a philosopher, or you want to be a, what you say, uh, a student of thoughts, mana, uh, only for logical argument, mana, what you say this time. Uh, rule and regulation, and and you want to not open yourself. You still want to be impersonal. This is not working here. <laughs> you have to make quite to the speaker that you also has a feeling. <laughs> now you see, before I start to give sharing classes. I was sharing. Now I become quiet. Now mm -hmm. my listener become a speaker. You don't want to do that? <laughs> because it's a difficult for Radhara Sudhanidhi and Vilap Manjali to share and quiet to speaker. You have to be more deep inside. Mm -hmm. So Gaurvani is deep inside. So I request him to share. That you have to be a speaker and he has to be a listener. <laughs> that is your intimacy. <laughs> right? Yes, it's Raga. We have to share feelings. We have to exchange feelings. This is Raga. It's not Vaidhi. <laughs> ah, Vaidhi, yes. I forget that. <laughs> yes, it's good that you forget. <laughs> <laughs> only listener and thinking outside. No, no, no working. You have to think inside and make the quiet that is speaker also listen to you. I want this here. You see Russian class he joined. You join Christian class. There is no place for me. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to make capable yourself that you don't give chance for the speaker. You also <laughs> know that. <laughs> yeah. This is your feeling. <laughs> you your blockage. What was difficult for you, you remove it. Right or not? Think on that. Yes. <laughs> not not say yes and no. No, no, no. Yes, I I also had this blockage because uh, of my experience in the past that when I was sharing in the past in Vaidhi, then uh, it was more like uh, let's say a little bit like a battle. Who knows better? Who knows more? Who remembers more verses or whatever? But actually, this is over because this is not leading to any goal, except that your ego is growing and it gets more fine, like the mm -hmm. ego that others maybe not sense, but it gets actually bigger. <laughs> so to come out of this, this the, the beginning is to, to share your feelings because we are all we all have feelings. We are humans. We have feelings because the soul is inside and the soul wants to actually live. So it only can live on feelings. So we have to share feelings to nourish, to nourish the soul also. Because Mahabhav, the source of all feelings, is nourishing us through others, through sharing of feelings mm. or directly. It depends. Different occasions. So, but we always have to share feelings because only then we are alive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If not, then you are in Bhadi Bhakti. Still, you don't want to come out from Bhadi Bhakti. <laughs> no, feelings. Then, no feelings. Then we are yes. ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> then are Mahabhutas. <laughs> Eight Mahabhutas. <laughs> And karma andriya. Effect, effect is there. 
यू नो ज्ञान इंद्रिया एंड कर्मा इंद्रिया इज एट महाभूता श्रीमद भागवत मेंशन इन हिंदी आई डोंट नो इन इंग्लिश वेर इज मेंशन बट वन डे आई एम कैचिंग वन घोष कैच एस सो मच प्रॉब्लम है and eight ghosts are capturing me mahabhutas <laughs> so please my dear our nature to break this and come out in feelings this is my request to all of you and guru dev i i can see another effect of this sharing is also that you will lose your your ego more and more because usually you are hiding your feelings that yeah because you are you have a goal behind so but when you share your feelings then actually everybody can see that you have feelings and they also start to actually open themselves because they see you have no goal behind to cheat or something like that right he's talking about this right beautiful thank you my dear thank you guru dev and thank you all rightly that we are we, now we start understanding chaitan meaning of chaitan charitam mm. all your mercy that we understand this yes this is the mercy of radha rani and radha mohan that we understand chaitanya and when we understand chaitanya that we understand radha yeah. this is the goal of our life guru is the way not go radhe rat jai shri radhe punya also is very here sitting radhe <laughs> radhe happy radhe radhe <laughs> what well, one thing else i want to share cuz i thought i thought about i feel also with with sharing it's it's also connected no in some way also with some fear no like some like if you don't want to share it's like some fear that you're saying something wrong or some something connected with social and fear is actually opposite of love no that yes not, not hate is opposite but fear is opposite of love so i feel that's also by god is pushing also to come out of a bit of this fear no in some way so that mm-hmm. wow. also a wonderful point actually wonderful. yes <laughs> all mercy <laughs> <laughs> so when we can hear your singing oh <laughs> <laughs> I I still need to practice a bit more. I have no, no time. No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for that moment. <laughs> ah, okay. You know, next sometimes Monday. I have not so much time to to rest, so no time to play music. <laughs> next Monday. Next Monday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next Monday. <laughs> you can try. <laughs> But so nice thank you for sharing. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. You are doing such a wonderful service. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say I'm so happy to see all of you. When I see my my yoga shakti and my sundaram oh, and man. Ramani Priya Didi and Madhuri Arasa and Prem Darshan and Rasamai. I feel so, we are one family and I feel we are all, hey, Radha Radha Dayani Divaya. I feel we are all here in the room together and it's, it's bringing so, it's so precious really. I'm so grateful to all of you. I feel without this Sangha and without Vaishnava Sangha, we, this is the essence for our spiritual growth. 
I just want to really say how much I'm grateful to all of you. Say <laughs> Now, Monday has a meaning in our yes. life. <laughs> 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 was a happy blues. Monday was a sad day. Now Monday is right. Now Monday was a happy day. Yes, and thank you so much for sharing, Guravani. I really appreciate. And also, when you are singing, always you make us cry. So I'm very grateful that you bring tears to our eyes in this way. Actually, I'm so grateful because when I came in the beginning. I was so down and you were so merciful and so lovely and uh, it took quite some time till I came up a little bit more in my power again because I had a breakdown before that so I'm really remembering how lovely you took care and all this great family here they are so merciful and so lovely. And this has one source. It's Radharani's mercy coming down. And Gurudev is actually feeding us personally with his hand, with his love. So thank you all that you are taking part in this feeding each other and spreading this love. And please let us go on, go deeper and spread more and share our feelings. Actually, I don't care if I'm wrong or I'm right, because who cares? But Rani is always right. That's the center of our life. Yeah. Yeah.